friends, once again, you're most welcome to our online teaching here at Standard High School, the School of Champions. You're with Chene Andrew. Once again, today I'm taking you into African nationalism. Don't forget our paper is still 10 stroke 1. Now in this paper, today we want to focus on African problems, the states of Africa and their problems. In Africa, we have so many problems from the time African countries got independence to date. Africa is still experiencing a number of challenges. This may include child abuse, wars, civil wars, coup d'etats, corruption, unemployment, poverty, refugee crisis, neocolonialism. I'm telling you the list is endless. But today we want to look at something very contagious, something very serious that is hitting up all the African countries from the time we got independence. And that is the question of coups in Africa. Coups in Africa. Others can call it coup d'etat. Now, coup d'etat, this may not even be an English word, but it simply means wars or surprise attacks. Now, Africa, from the time we got independence to some countries, even before getting independence, this has been a very common challenge or problem. Where? What is a coup d'etat? That is what we are trying to develop. What we have called sudden wars or military confrontations. The attack or the war or military confrontation against an existing government. So we are looking at a coup d'etat as a sudden attack, especially by army men onto an existing government. Many African governments have been toppled, have been fought by army men attacking the existing governments because of a number of challenges. We have had coups, for example, the first coup was in 1952. This was in Egypt. Abdul Gamel, Colonel Nasser, rose up against the government of King Farouk. We had still, in 1963, this was in Togo. We had, the list is just endless. We had in 1965, in Congo, okay, this was by Mobutu Seseseko Wazabanga. In 1966, this was in Ghana. Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. Then we had 1969, this was in Libya by Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, raising up against the existing government of King Farouk, uh, sorry, King Idris. Then we had in our own country in 1971, we had Idi Amin raising up against the Militon Obote. We cannot forget 1974, this was in Ethiopia, okay, where our Emperor Haile Selassie was being overthrown by Mariam Mandisitu. So we have had an endless list. We had in Liberia 1980. So the list, this has been a common problem in African countries where governments are suddenly overthrown by the army because of a number of challenges. By the way, it could be an existing military government being overthrown still by the army or it could be even a civilian government being overthrown by the army. But our point in this, what we are calling coup d'etat, we are looking at an uprising of army men or the army rising up against the existing government. Then basically, brief and short overthrow, within a, a day to three, the government has been toppled. Let us basically focus on causes of these coups. Why have we had an endless chain of coups in Africa? And this is still a problem. Why do we have coups in Africa? Causes of coups in Africa. The very first cause that one looks at is hurried independence. African countries got independence when we were politically immature. Let me give you an example of a country like Congo. Congo got independence around 1960, when the whole country had only 17 graduates. 
and we still blame it back to our colonial masters who never prepared African countries to participate or to even understand the art of politics. So from the time of getting independence, straight away challenges are seen, struggling for power. I can even bring it to our country, Uganda. Uganda got independence in 62. Already by 66, shortly after four years, there were misunderstandings between Mutesa and Obote. Obote captures power in 66. By 71, he's already overthrown by Idi Amin. So we hurriedly got independence when we were politically non ready. Let me bring you an example before I even go into the issue of Sudan. Sudan got independence in 2011. But uh, that is around July. Hardly a month or two down the road, there was still a war between Salva Kiel and Marshall, which has escalated up to date. Whereas I, I will not call that a military coup. But I'm showing you issues of getting independence hurriedly. And that has been a very big challenge in Africa. Then the other thing has been foreign intrigue. Foreign intrigue. Our African affairs or politics is greatly influenced by our, especially former colonial masters. We shall basically study this at length into our next lesson of neocolonialism, where we have a challenge of African countries still depending indirectly or directly on to their former colonial masters. We have had foreign countries interfering in affairs of Africa supporting army men to overthrow the existing governments. Case in point was USA, influencing the question of overthrowing Kwame Nkrumah in Ghana. We had the question of Britain and Israel supporting Idi Amin against Milton Obote, among so many other cases I can cite out. Then the other case, the other cause, the influence of earlier coups in Africa, we had in 1952, this was a successful coup in Egypt. I told you Colonel Abdul Gamel Nasser, kicking out the government of King Farouk. This later influenced coups elsewhere. Within nominate, in 1963, we had cases in Togo. Later in 66, we had cases in Ghana. Now, these earlier coups influenced other African countries who later got it upon themselves that the only option for any government is to kick it out. So it will not surprise you that in 69, even Kwame Nkrumah thought of the same. This should not shock you. In 71, Idi Amin also thought of the same, that if only I can employ the army, I'll kick out the government of Obote. Does it surprise you that Maria Manjisitu in 74 also employed the same method and kicked out Emperor Haile Selassie? So the influence of earlier coups, especially that were successful, influenced other African countries, or still it influences African leaders, especially those in the army, to think of a coup as the option of eliminating the existing government. Then the other thing is the great desire to restore constitutional rule. The question of the constitution in Africa, dear listeners, is a very sensitive issue. Tampering with the constitution, violating the constitution, failure to respect the constitution has caused very many coups. And even in Uganda, if you can recall very well, we at one time had circus in our parliament because of issues of the constitution. We had Obote violating the 1962 independence constitution when he initiated his own, what we call the Pigeon Hall constitution in 1967. This partly contributed to the 1971 coup that hosted E.D. Sorry, uh, Milton Obote. Then we had Kwame Nkrumah in 1966. 1966, he tampered with the constitution. And that caused him serious problems that eventually saw him kicked out of power. So the need to respect, to restore constitutional rule explains why we have had coups in Africa. Then the other thing is mentally discontent. We have already said that coups are masterminded by the army, generals, colonels, organizing, 
or mobilizing the army against the existing government. Now, what partly explains why armies turn against the existing governments is the discontent. Within the soldiers, you find they are not happy. What makes them unhappy? Poor housing. Every time you find unipots, funny, funny cages, you automatically know those are the houses for the soldiers. Low pay, lack of food, lack of medicines, lack of uniforms, and so many other problems. And within the army, there has always been even the question of tribalism. One tribe taking all the bigger ranks at the expense of other tribes. These are problems in Africa. These are not problems in your own country. These are problems starting across Africa. And this leaves the army very discontented, very divided. And that does not surprise you seeing one group rising up against the existing government. We had an issue in 1999. A coup in Ivory Coast. It was partly because of the discontent in the army. Look at what happened in 1971 in Uganda here. There were divisions in the army. And that generated a ground. Then the other thing is the refugee problem. Refugee problem. Because we have had so many civil wars in Africa. We have had so many problems either caused by natural disaster. This has seen a group of people move, running away from their countries, from their motherland, to perhaps other neighboring countries. And for that matter, they qualify to be called refugees. But even when they are in those other countries seeking refuge or seeking uh, better life, life has proved to still remain very hard in those other areas where they hide. We had cases of the 1994 coup in Rwanda against Hadi now. But one should know that it was partly triggered off by the question of refugee. In 1959, we had the Rwanda Revolution between Baba Hutu and the Tusi. And most of these people were thrown in neighboring countries. And they later had to fight tooth and nail to get back to their motherland. And in the process, this will explain the 1994 coup that eventually escalated into a terrible genocide. Then widespread economic crisis in Africa. Widespread economic crisis. Africa has had challenges that leave very many people unhappy, dissatisfied, and therefore resort to a change. Cases of unemployment, inflation, scarcity of commodities, and also when one section is busy enjoying at the expense of the other group, so this widespread economic crisis generates discontent and this is what has always seen the armies taking a lead in overthrowing the existing governments then we cannot rule out the issue of greed for power greed for power all the uh, coups we have talked about the point behind remains greed for power look at the 1971 coup in uganda Idi Amin wanted to have power as simple as that. That's why Shep after getting into power. He showered himself with a thousand titles to an extent of calling himself Field Marshal. A title we have never had in Africa here, but that was Idi Amin. He called himself the life president. I assume he is still leading. We have had issues in all other countries. Why did Maria Manjisi to kick out Emperor Haile Slasi? We had cases in Congo here, in Nigeria. In Liberia, greed for power. Kwame Nkrumah, capital, sorry, uh, this uh, Muammar Gaddafi, at the age of 27, he was already dreaming of becoming a president. Actually, in history of Africa, he is the president who ascended onto this throne at a very, very early stage, by 27. But it should be noted that even when he was still in school, he wrote to his peers and his friends soliciting for assistance, claiming that he was already the president of Libya. Greed for power. Then religious intolerance. Religious intolerance. Where one section is marginalized by another group. You either find a Muslim group pressing or suppressing the interests of the Catholics. We have ever had cases, especially even in Ghana, in Ethiopia, where one group of the Catholics is busy suppressing the other group, well, the case in Sudan was between Catholics and Muslims. So the question of religion remains very, very key. 
Then endless wars, especially where the army is entangled or engaged in endless wars. In endless wars. Thank you so much for listening.